Okay, we're going to pick up where lesson number two ended. There's others out there, so go ahead and look them up if you haven't yet. Um, the point that we need to start with is the merge category up here. This is the line that we're on. Um, as you see, it's not lit up. That's because I don't have any image selected. Um, so if I select on more than one image, that now is opened and we can we can use it. So let's bring these up in the, our work area. And for today, what we're gonna do, we're gonna resize this with big. And then we're gonna take our hello and put on the butterfly. Okay, if I was to print this as is, um, it would print the butterfly black and it would paint hello black. So on your image, black on black, you would not see hello. So we need a way to make hello show on the printout. All right, so if we highlight both of them and we come up to merge, there's four separate categories. Um, the one with the word, uh, subtract basically if you've got an image overlapping another image and you hit that it will automatically I'll show you make one black one white or one engrave and one not you see how the the yellow hello changed to white that it's treating it as a blank spot so now if I print that the butterfly is all black but the word doesn't print so it'll show up because it's an un, it's an unengraved area if that makes sense and that is how that works All right, let's take this down put it to the side and move on to something else here all right we've got this butterfly and this butterfly both like that there's an area in between them here that's touching. If you merge graphic shapes, that area that was highlighted here that was adjoining is gone. And basically what it did, on a lot of different graphics programs, that's called weld. It took the two pieces that were separate and made them one piece. So um, it's, it's a permanent, semi-permanent, um, way to, to meld your graphics together um, if well I'm not going to go that detail okay so there, there's that portion of it it's a weld let's go back and get rid of it undo alright the next one up let's highlight two things and we're going to overlap them like we did before we did the subtract merge overlaying shapes and you tell by the little graphic there it's two squares overlapping each other we got two butterflies overlapping each other and when we click this merge overlapping shapes it's only going to keep what touches each other that was the only part of the two images that were touching each other that's what they saved and that's what they kept the one below that subtract overlying shapes you can see by the squares there anything that's overlapping um, is going to be neutralized and, and it's going to go away so let's hit it and there it went away uh, it may seem tough at this point but you'll find that it's quite helpful to use some of these especially the subtract one uh, when you're overlaying image on top of each other and you want one to be seen that would normally wouldn't be All right, and that's it for that Okay, the next area they're gonna talk about is the split I'm gonna highlight the image <coughs> And if you hit split You see the letters turn back to black um, If I 
move the butterfly. There's hello. Uh, the only drawback doing this is sometimes like the inner the E, the inner sides, they're gonna disappear. Um, but now I have my butterfly back. Um, I'll have to redo my word, but I, have, I got them split away from each other. Um, this comes in handy if you've merged the two of them together, you've added five lines worth of text, and then you remember, oh, well, that doesn't have to be there, and you want to take it out. Um, if you hit undo to get back to it, you lose all five lines of text that you did in the meantime. The split just lets you do it with the minimal amount of damage that you need to, need to correct. Okay. Okay, hope everybody's still here. Uh, next, we're going to talk about these uh, position and scale. Behind the words of position and scale, it shows you what readings you're in. Right now, I'm in millimeters. Um, if you were to change that to inches, it'd say they have an I in there instead of MM. Um, position is the X, Y axis. You see the little X and the little Y. Um, what the position is in relativity to that. Center is this upper left hand corner, zero, zero. So right now, this butterfly sits, sits 46. 0.9 millimeters off the x-axis and 87.6 millimeters off the y-axis. Move it up, you see how it changes, how those numbers change. Uh, but still, uh, this you don't really use a lot. This is more of a, a visual thing when you're moving stuff around. But if I know where this one's at and then I click on this one, I know where that one's at. I can make number changes and, and get it over there. With both these boxes here, position and scale, you can manually highlight and type in your number. So if I want this to be right in the corner, it'd be zero, zero. As you see, now this wing of the butterflies touching zero, zero. The next one is scale. If I have my butterfly highlighted and I want this to be um, let's say 130 I'm sorry 130 by 130 I can type type it in 130 130 and now I have my butterfly 130 millimeters you see the little lock here the hasp on the lock is up if I was to grab one of these corners and drag it it will let me do it but it allows it to be ob made oblong it doesn't keep the proportions um, but if I'm at 130 by 130 and I click the latch here or the lock and the hasp goes down if I move it it stays proportionate to each other see 182.9 182.9 uh, it keeps the proportion Okay, the next one we get to is rotate. When you're manipulating an image like this, this is one way that you, I'd say you want to just turn the butterfly 90 degrees. You can just highlight that at 90 degrees and he turns 90 degrees. Um, the alternative way to do that is grab this little square here at the top and rotate it. Um, and you have to go wherever you, you tell it to go. Um, this comes in handy if you're doing text and you want it at a certain angle or whatever um, say I want my text to be at 45 degrees 45 degrees if you did it visually you might be close to 45 degrees but not quite 45 degrees that's the way that you can you can tell um, and if you want it to, you go back to zero and you want it to go the other way all you got to do is put a negative sign in front of what you're doing so here we're going to put negative 45 and there's that at negative 45 degrees okay those are all fairly simple ones the next one the triangles facing each other but they're different one's black one's white um, and we're going to do this with text because you really can't tell on a butterfly. It's symmetrical. All right, there's hello. 
we want a mirror image of hello. Hit this, the triangles to here, and it flips it. If we had um, an image Our little dog, and we don't want a little dog going to the left. We want the dog going to the right. We hit simply hit here, and dog flips going the other way. Comes in very handy. The next one is um, oh, before we move on, like most things, there's two ways to do everything. If we have our dog here and we want to go the other way and we don't hit up here we can grab this corner and drag it and once you get past that and bring him back he's going the other way so that's another way to do it okay the next one up is mirror vertically so butterflies go on towards the top click it butterflies going towards the bottom Butterflies going towards the top, butterflies going towards the bottom. And like I said, you can always um, do it this way too. I'm just bringing the corners together and it flips it over. All right, the next one is, rot is rotate So if your image is at zero degrees and you want it to move, you click here, it's going to turn 90 degrees every time you hit this button. Just a quick rotate. Thing. Okay. Now the next couple buttons are something you probably use a lot. Um, these are up here in the right corner. Just a couple quick things. Um, if you have a mouse that has a wheel on it and if you haven't figured it out already yet when your arrow is on the work area you can rotate back forward just using that mouse wheel um, short of that um, if you uh, come over here where it says 61% just bring your mouse over there and click in it will bring you to this screen here. That's by default it'll bring you to a full screen in your layout area. Um, but you can do anything, you can go to a thousand percent, two thousand percent, which is huge. Um, you can go to 25 percent. Uh, but like I said, every time you come back over here and just click on the down arrow without scrolling down, it'll bring you a full screen like that. The uh, next button here it uh, looks like a locate button, but all the information, when you click on an, something clicked on, you all the information over here. If you click up here, all this will disappear and it will bring you to a note screen. Uh, you can add notes in here. You, this is the material that you're working with um, by default. Uh, we'll get to that here a little bit later, but that just clears that screen up and gives you the, the locate. The next one is the hand. If you are working on an image and you're scrolled in over here, working on, um, oh, need to move over, work on hello. The hand, basically you put your hand anywhere on the work area, click on it. You can move the screen. Click on it, hold it, move the screen, get to where you want it, let go, and it stays. Okay, the next two buttons, laser flat, that's what we're normally working on. Anything that you're working on a flat surface area, that's that. Um, the next one is laser cylindrical. Um, when you're working with your rotary attachment, that has to be clicked. I think I'm going to call it quits for this one. And we'll come back and we'll do the fun stuff over here on this side. Thank you.